Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Big Snap After Dark. Thank you so much for staying tuned in, tapped in, and turned on. If you guys haven't already joined the fam, please make sure you go ahead and smash the subscribe button, click the bell right next to it, dink. That way you guys are notified every time I go live. Um, so what's up guys? So typically I normally do these videos live. However, it's super late. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'd rather you pop open this video as soon as you get up tomorrow when Pluto transits in Capricorn retrograde. Okay, so let's talk about it. Um, just so that you're aware, I do do timestamps if you guys are new. Um, so right now, this is intro, how you guys can find me, okay? And then I'm gonna talk about um, Pluto energy, okay? And then I'll talk about Capricorn energy, and then I'll combine the two, that way, you know, I like to break things down for you guys. And then after that, um let's see oh i'll give you some historical events the last time pluto was in capricorn how things played out in real life that way you can kind of mm, get some imagery going as far as what you may experience during this time okay um also too mercury will be uh transiting in the sign of gemini same day okay so i'll do like a little bit of that but i'm gonna do an actual whole separate video on that to really break it down to the nitty-gritty okay um and then i'll talk about a few aspects that are playing out right here um and then i'll go into all the houses okay um based off of your rising sign so you gotta know your rising sign and where it's transiting and what house so i'll just break down the houses for you and what kind of energy will be playing out negative and positive y'all know how i roll already um and then afterwards i'll go ahead and talk about the moon in aries um and then just a little bit because i'll probably go live on monday discussing moon and aries and all the aspects for that day as well and go more into depth you guys know how i do my moon videos and then I'll talk about the little baby stelliums that we got playing out as far as water, earth, and fire, okay? <laughs> so go ahead and grab something to drink, um, you know, tea or coffee, whatever it is for you, and let's go ahead and dive in. All right, guys, so, um, so let's see here. So I pulled up the charts. So Pluto is entering Capricorn June 11th, okay, by the time you're watching this video. And it's gonna go all the way until October 10th, okay? We all know Capricorn is a cardinal energy. It's ruled by Saturn. So if you are a cardinal sign, such as, um, what's that, Cancer, Aries, Libra, and Capricorn are gonna be feeling this energy the most. Um, however, we still have, you know, like Aries and Libra, uh, we'll have like a, a little square, um, during this time. And then also Taurus and Virgo is going to have like a sextile during this time as well. We all know Pluto rules the eighth house, which is the Scorpio house. Mm. So you kind of know the energy. It can be felt spiritually and physically. Okay. However, it's transforming for you. Um, you know, this is a mysterious planet, okay? Pluto is mysterious, and you never know what it's gonna do, okay? Because it's real deep, it's real deep down there, okay? Um, so that's why it deals with legacies, deaths, rebirths, inheritances, assets, things of that nature, okay? So it's real intense, it's very truth seeking as well. Um, it's a very secretive and mystifying kind of a planet. Okay, so let's just get that already out the way. All right. <laughs> um, so like I said, we can have lots of destruction going on, um, lots of death and rebirth uh, through transformation. Okay, Trans transformative type of speaking. Now, when I say the word death, I don't want you to assume like all these people are going to die. I mean, that may happen just because of the world, but I'm just saying it's more like internal when I say that. You may have a death and a rebirth of self. Okay, just, let's just get that out the way as well. <laughs> okay, um, so this kind of just brings our subconscious worries or secrets to the surface um, whenever we have uh, Pluto playing out. Okay, um, you know, so it's like a think of it like a what's the word I'm looking for? <gasps> like a metamorphosis <laughs> kind of an energy. Okay, so pretty much it's gonna either bring you clarity or it's gonna bring you closure to any type of illusions that we all have been living in, okay? Whether that's personally or globally, all right? 
Um, so pretty much our whole status is about to be transformed, okay? Whether that's with self or like I said, like in the world, negative or positive, depending on where it's transiting in your house. So you may wanna pay attention to this video, okay? Um, like I said, I'm gonna timestamp everything as well. So depending on if you master your energy or not, you know what I'm saying? Or people could be bringing you, like bringing the energy to you, you gotta deal with it. I don't care how you're dealing with the world, like let's say you do master yourself and you're in a good light, well, some energy could be brought to you. Or you could actually be playing this energy out just so that you're aware as well. Now let's kind of break down Capricorn, okay? Um, so Capricorn rules the 10th house. That's why Capricorn is all about structure, um, it's all about discipline, uh, you know, authority as well. It's a very ambitious zodiac sign, okay? Um, you know, since it, it's ruled by Saturn, you have to recognize that the relationship between this is... Now, this can be a relationship between yourself as an individual and also authoritative figures that are in your life because it's 10th house energy so like your bosses you know um supervisors or any mentors and things of that nature okay so capricorn ruling the 10th house you know many of many capricorns have a very methodical oh, excuse me or disciplined approach to when it comes to careers, building businesses, or building anything of that sort, okay? So with a focus, because it's a slow moving energy, so it's gonna be focused on bringing in long-term stability or thinking long-term, okay? Or put, having like a long-term approach to whatever goals or achievements that they uh, make in their lives, okay? So now we can combine the two when Pluto is retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, this is what's gonna intensify that transformative type of an energy um, in those areas of our lives, okay? Whether this is, you know, for self, I mean, let's just say and, self and the world, because <laughs> we all about to change, okay? Um, so it can really trigger power struggles, okay? Um, this is why it's gonna really uh, bring an attempt to kind of reform it, what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Or it can dismantle it, you know, for the most part. You know, whatever systems, systems are already breaking down. You see it happening and playing out. You see TikTok, you see YouTube, you see all these videos. You see how it's just kind of like Babylon's falling, right? So, you know, we, we gotta bring in the new systems, okay? Whether that's you participating in it or, you know, um, you know who. So pretty much, um, so that's why Capricorn uh, energy, that's why it, it kind of relates to um, our finances, okay? It relates to the economy pretty much for the most part. So, you know, you gotta remember, um, this is why we may accrue, you know, as far as like money, you know, you see how like everything's going digital and everyone's talking about it. Um, you know, this is how we have kind of some economic crisis going on. We, we're dealing with uh, inflation. We've dealt with in the past recessions and, you know, changes in regulations and all these things as far as the global financial aspect of it all, okay? So, you know, then this can also, on the back end of that for ourselves, we gain like a deep, deep, deep self-reflection and we have to kind of transform and kind of go with the current and what's going on, right? Um, so this may inspire us since it deals with the economy and money. Um, we may have to reevaluate our financial forecasts and our goals and our career paths and thinking like long term, okay? So don't forget that. As a collective, this energy can really allow everyone to um, change their views on society as a whole, change your values, your morals, beliefs, okay? Change your whole system um, for the greater, you know what I'm saying? So that you can become very authentic in what you got going on um, and build some integrity and build your foundation and bring on the stability and security for yourself, okay? Um, you know, as a whole, um, this energy, you know, can highlight some environmental concerns, okay? It is an earth sign, all right? 
So you see the weather that's playing out in New York and what's going on. Um, you know what I mean? How we sustain ourselves right now during this time. You know, there may be some imbalances because Pluto, what? It's, it's here to break things up, shake things up, okay? Destruct. So this is gonna really bring our attention to, you know, the climate change. I know where I'm living, I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting a little light skin over here. You know, at first I was getting real dark and, you know, in the sun every day. And now it's like, they're hiding the sun. So it's like this wishy-washy kind of energy. I feel like we're gonna have like a late summer in Cali or something like that, I don't know. But, you know, with earth energy, um, <laughs> this can bring on like natural disasters and things of that nature, you know? Um, and they might start changing some policies as far as like uh, thinking of land and environment you know because it's earth energy okay um, so let's go ahead and tap into um some historical events the last time pluto was in capricorn just so that we're kind of aware just i'm just gonna do a quick real brief okay this coincided with that global financial crisis that happened in 2008 i remember like it was yesterday i swear to god um so this kind of led to the economic um downturn um, lots of failures with the banks. <laughs> We've already been hearing stuff like that. The stock market kind of declining, um, you know, and we had a whole global recession, okay? Um, so this, once that happened, we were actually able to see the flaws in the system, okay? Revealing energy, okay? Um, so this really triggered, um, for them to have like new laws and regulations and all that, okay? Um, we also had some political changes as well and some power struggles in our countries. Um, example, you know, as far as the political stance, this was when like Barack Obama um, was president, okay, in 2008. And then we had the Arab Spring um, uprisings a little, a couple years after that. Um, and then that's when all the populist movements occurred in various parts of the world. We also had some scandals and controversies as well in some very powerful organizations, um, which led to a lot of scrutiny, lots of demands, um, so that they can actually have accountability, you know what I'm saying, for whatever's playing out, because then that scared kind of us as a collective on, if, if they ain't got it right, what about our stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um, cause this is where all of the corporate frauds were like exposed for what was going on, you know, for their unethical practices, such as, you know, that, um, Bernie, what's his name? That Ponzi scheme that was playing out, Bernie something, I forgot. Um, this is when we had a movement like me, hashtag me too. Um, you know, this was shedding light on sexual harassment and abuse that was going on. All right. Um, so this really increased our focus as far as the environmental issues that were playing out um, to really address what was going on in the world. Um, we also had rapid transitions with technology as well, okay? Um, this is where we had the digital revolution, all right? So we witnessed the widespread of like all these smartphones, um, you know, all these social media platforms, um, AI, uh, what else? We also had a lot of things that were just ended up being automated as well, okay? So that's pretty much that. So the same day, we're gonna have Mercury, which is gonna be a one degree in Gemini, all right? Um, so this is where, you know, Mercury rules the planet of communication, okay? Um, it's at home in Gemini, just so that you're aware, but this is adding that Pluto in Capricorn energy, even though it's still at a low degree, this is where we can uncover those hidden truths, okay, even further. <laughs> so we might hear some things. You may personally even have deep conversations, or this is where lots of debate kind of an energy, where you're probing and being very inquisitive, trying to get to the nitty gritty and find the answers and the details of everything. It's gonna be so intense and transformative for real, okay? It's kind of like, you know, think of Scorpio energy. They're like the, the Nancy Drews, the investigative kind of an energy, like the third degree, the way that we think, the way that we research, the way that we converse with other people. 
lots of complex subjects and ideas will be playing out. I'm pretty sure you'll see somebody going live with it all up in the boxes on TikTok or, you know, whatever, Zoom calls and all the things, Facebook groups, you name it. So um, this is just gonna encourage everybody to at the same token really express their mind express their thoughts what they think is playing out what's going on um and also bring on that assertive uh, power that assertive like personal power because we also have the moon going to aries i'll talk about it in a second but um you know but all in all like i said since it is going to be in the planet of communicate or the yeah it's the planet of communication. It's going to be at home. This is where we can also gain lots of clarity. Um, you can release old patterns um, and adopt more or different ways of thinking during this time and, and communicating, okay? I'll do a separate video on that. I'm gonna go way more into detail uh, how it's affecting you and your transit. So uh, look out for that video when it comes out, <laughs> all right? Um, so let's pull up some aspects, you guys. We've got Venus, which just moved into the sign of Leo. It's gonna be squaring up with Jupiter. We all know Jupiter is in the sign of Taurus. So putting those energies together, this is really just gonna enhance our desire our desire um, for the luxurious lifestyle. You know, we might overindulge during this time. We might, you know, kind of like being in the pursuit of feeling pleasure, feeling good. Like we all kind of want to feel good. So we also might be torn between enjoying the good things in life and then trying to kind of like maintain a balance uh, with our daily living activities or, you know, how we maintain and approach um, our resources and also any ships that we're sailing, any relationships, okay? Um, you gotta you gotta be careful with this energy too even though um well it's a square so because squares can be good and bad right i just kind of gave you a little bit of a good how you can take it but on the flip side to that you know we can be very tempted to overspend okay um you might overcommit to something you might just overindulge um it's like you might even overeat okay because we want to feel happy we want to feel good um because taurus energy is you know our pleasures you know things that we enjoy okay uh we also have mercury trining pluto same day this is the same day mercury goes into gemini same day pluto is going to capricorn now remember trines are good however um, what do I want to say, however, let's just the good it's, we can have lots of deep conversations, lots of complex ideas, you know, and like I said, this can bring more on. That's where that clarity, this is the wordsmiths, you know, you can really talk a good game, the power of persuasion kind of with this energy. So that's why you got to be careful and utilize your discernment as well. Um, but this is bringing on even more so the deep research, investigative kind of a vibe, you know, uncovering you know, what's been hidden. So you might be like extra searching and as soon as you hear something, you might type it into Google or TikTok or whatever, or YouTube, you know what I'm saying? To gain more uh, knowledge here, okay? Um, on the flip side to that, you know, this can be a really good uh, energy to learn something to, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, as far as you might dive deep, as far as either mastering energy, this could be a personal mission for you, depending on also where your houses are transiting, where it's transiting your houses. Um, or just because you want to know something, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, and with with this trine, as far as Mercury being the planet of communication, this can really enhance your mental focus. You can really concentrate and get things done. Um, you know, you can really be assertive with your ideas because also uh, the moon will be in Aries. So, you know, everyone's gonna have an opinion, but this can also bring on that confidence and that power of persuasion, commingling all of these energies together, all right? So let's talk about the houses, guys, okay? Depending on, so make sure you know your rising sign and where it's located um, and where it's transiting for you, and I'll give you kind of a gist on what to look out for, all right? Um, so that way you're kind of well aware of what's going on. So let's talk about first house. So we all know if it's transiting your if it's transiting your first house, 
Um, this is going to be all about self. This is going to be all about your identity. This is going to be all about your personal appearance. So Pluto retrograding in the first house can bring lots of transformations as far as who you are, you know, how you perceive yourself, your identity. Okay. So you might undergo some type of personal metamorphosis, your goddamn self, all the way up until October. This is a long, well, it's not super long, but that's kind of a long while. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you might come out a better person. You might emerge and know your purpose or status in this world. You know what I'm saying? You might become more real and authentic and, you know, no veil, no mask, mask off kind of an energy. Um, however, you know, this process may also kind of involve confronting or releasing um, like some deep seated fears and power struggles within yourself. Okay. Uh, if it's transiting in your second house, so we all know your second house is going to be about uh, your finances, your values, and self-worth, right? Um, so it can actually kind of be good in here when it's retrograding in the second house because this is all about our finances, what we've all been kind of like looking at, especially when all those planets were Taurus, right? Um, uh, building our stability and stuff. So this may lead you to really kind of look at what you got going on as far as reassessing your values, uh, transforming all of that, um, you know, how you approach money and all of your material possessions, you know, because that's tor this is a Taurus house. So, you know, this can really have you involved with your finances. However, on the flip side, you got to know you may face some financial challenges, losing a job, gaining a job, you know, having a business. You know, it might flourish, it might not, you know, all the ups and downs of that. You might have to confront, you know, do you have unhealthy spending habits and things of that nature as well? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, how are you controlling your money? Do you have any issues with money? So that's kind of like second house energy. If it's transiting in your third house, we all know third house is all about communication. Now Mercury just went into Gemini as well. So it's at home, okay? So if it's transiting in your third house, this is all about communication, learning, even probably something to do with your siblings as well. But um, this retrograde can bring lots of intense and transformative experiences as far as when you're conversing or how you're conversing or who you're conversing with you can learn a lot of things when it's transiting your third house you might be a person that's doing lots of research you might find out you know before you didn't know about crypto now you know about it now you know what i mean like wherever you're investing in you might tap into that you might do some really deep research you might even uncover some hidden truths. People might reveal things to you or you might be a very revealing type of a person and, and speak more truth, okay? Um, your communication style might be very influential amongst other people. It can be very powerful. It can be very life-changing. So be careful the power of the tongue, okay? You can be manifesting some good situations or manifesting more challenges uh, <laughs> come your near future, okay? Because remember, it's still in retrograde, uh, Pluto and Capricorn. Um, so it's important to be very mindful um, when it's in your third house, okay? You might even struggle with conversing with, you know, if you're in relationships or if you have siblings or people you live with or close relatives and things of that nature if it's in your third house, okay? Um, we do also have here fourth house energy. So if Pluto's transiting your fourth house, we all know fourth house is your home, you know, your foundation, family, things of that nature. So this is may involve lots of deep deep emotional healing you know this is like shadow work stuff might pop up you might get triggered from some old things that you probably didn't know about as far as in family okay um so that's why i said that you might even learn about your roots your ancestral history and things of that nature um you know, there might be some power struggles within the family dynamic, especially if you have kids or if you're, you know, like I said, if you're in a relationship or something like that, you might have you know, power struggles for real, for real, because that's that Pluto energy. Um, so it can be, it can be challenging, um, you know, but it can also offer an opportunity is what I like to call it instead of a challenge. Let's say an opportunity for you to increase your uh, emotional foundation, kind of heal, maybe establish more security within yourself as well. If it's transiting your fifth house, um, we do have here, you know, uh, fifth house, we all know it's like romantic connections, your creativity, um, how you express yourself. So you can really dive deep as far as 
you know, changing the way you express yourself in romantic connections, um, you know, whatever you're personally passionate about, uh, wherever you have, you know, wherever you're putting your skill sets into as far as your creative endeavors, you know what I'm saying? So you might undergo like some real inner uh, transformation that's gonna lead you to be a little bit more authentic, um, you know, in the way that you express yourself, you know what I mean? So um, just be aware of trying to control a lot of things, you know, the power dynamics in this house, you could have some control issues um, as far as, of course, when it's dealing with other energies in the romantic sector of that. So sixth house, so if Pluto is transiting your sixth house, sixth house is all about, you know, your work, your health, um, also your daily uh, routine, okay? How you live throughout the day, okay? So you might feel uh, <clears throat> the need to really assess maybe your career path, like instead of working at this job, maybe you're gonna do, you know what I'm saying, uh, run my own business, or just the way you operate at work can really transform. You might move positions, you might, you know, like move up or move down, you never know where, wherever you're at, okay, in life. Um, you have to be careful because you may, you might be in a situation in the workplace where you're trying to control and be in power or, or you know, if you hold a certain badge as a supervisor or a lead or a trainer or whatever, you might kind of, you got to be careful of not, um, is as, as, as like letting people know you got the badge, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you do this and you do that. You know, you gotta be kind of careful with that um, as far as the dynamic of that. So also too, you gotta be real careful as far as your health, because since it's retrograding, you may have, you know, maybe some health issues. So I would really pay attention to what you're putting in your vessel during this time if it's transiting in your sixth house. Um, but all in all, it can be, you know, very healing. You can really transform, you might, see yourself in a way where it's like, you know what, I'm not gonna act like that anymore. I'm gonna be like this, you know what I'm saying? In the workplace or changing your diet, you know, doing different activities and things of that nature, okay? Um, so we do have seventh house, seventh houses of relationships or any kind of situationship, whatever ship you sail in, uh, partnership, you know, this could even involve contracts, okay? Since we're dealing with um, the assets and things of that nature and finances, right? So um, with this retrograde, this can bring transformations, of course, in that area. So you might, uh, you might find a deeper understanding as far as if you're in an actual relationship or dealing with business partnerships, friendships, however that is, you may lose some friends, gain some friends, um, find things out about people, see if you need to, you know, restructure that area of your life, breakups to makeups, whatever it is for you. Um, you know, some people might be addressing things to you in your relationships, or you might be addressing things to them, telling them the truth. Like, you know, you really ain't going nowhere, so I'm gonna go move over here. You know, you never know. So um, power struggles can arise in that sector as well. So this can also kind of show you, um, you know, where you can gain a little bit more, more authentic connections in your life, okay? Um, eighth house, so Pluto is at home in the eighth house, okay? So this is what, um, shared resources, intimacy, death, rebirth, kind of an energy. So when it's in this house, um, you might be able to confront your own fears, you know what I'm saying? Um, this is where you can really go deep within and kind of release old patterns, behaviors, um, and things of that nature of what you were doing, okay? So you can really transform on a psychological and spiritual level when it's at home in the eighth house, okay? So um, it's very crucial um, also too, if you're sharing anything, living with anybody that you kind of, as far as the money factor goes, you know, communication is gonna be key, Mercury and Gemini. Handle things with care, be very transparent, especially if you have, you're sharing anything with anybody, okay, in the eighth house. Ninth house. So we all know ninth house is all about what? Higher education, your beliefs and things of that nature. So it traveling through the ninth house, um, <clears throat> you might wanna learn a little bit more. You might be very intense on 
seeking a deeper meaning to life, really questioning everything around you, tapping into the metaphysical and things of that nature, you know, trying to really go dive deep and figure out your life's purpose. Like, what am I supposed to be here to do? You know, you might go into the gene keys and do astro cartography and all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, human design, but ninth house is also travel too. So you might have to, you might be traveling a lot or you might get away to learn something. You might have to get outside of whatever comfort zone or environment that you're in in order to elevate at this time when it's transiting your ninth house, okay? You might wanna learn about some different cultures or something like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, they might spark some ideas because it's like a philosophical kind of a house, okay? It's ruled by, um, sat, it's a Satch house. So you might be able to broaden your perspectives, okay? Um, so <laughs> Pluto in uh, Capricorn 10th house, right? Capricorn rules the 10th house. So this is going to be huge as far as your public image, your career, and your reputa reputation. Okay. So you got to recognize you might go undergo, like, you might really reassess how are you looking, you know, as far as your public image and what, how you're representing yourself to the world, especially if you're trying to run a business or if you're trying to, you know, just, just, just all overall, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that might go under um, a transformation, you know, depending on what kind of goals you have and you might gain some more ambitious energy to actually, it might spark something different. Maybe you weren't, you were just working around the job. Now you're like over it. Now you're like, you know what? I, I got this skill set or I know this information. Maybe I can turn my life around. So, um, but all, you know, you might also have some power struggles or, or some, some significant changes as far as you might just like drop the job, but you might not have like any any backup money or anything. So you gotta kind of be careful and make sure when you make these decisions, you kind of have a smooth transition and not put yourself in a detriment. So you have to kind of be careful. Um, but as far as public image goes, make sure, you know, you might be looking at yourself as far as like, I really just wanna be my true self, you know what I'm saying? Or, or express yourself in a more authentic way so you can be more captivating and build your an audience or a soul fan, okay? Um, 11th house, so if it's transiting your 11th house, you know 11th house is all about friendships, social groups, things of that nature, you know, also your dreams, hopes, and aspirations. So, you know, uh, this can really shift your social circle, you know what I'm saying? You might've been, like I said, you might lose some best friends, you might have some friends, you might not, you might gain some better ones, or it all depends on how you're vibing, okay, with your energy. Um, so some old connections, you might see, you know what, this is no longer serving me, I'm not growing here. Because if you're the smartest person in the room, you'll be able to tell. But if you're in a, in a, a circle where you can actually learn something, then you might be more, gra uh, <clears throat> you might gravitate towards uh, that energy, okay? It's kind of like when it's in the 11th house, you might see this and you might say, you know what? Um, I want to be around people that are of influence, you know, I want to have influential connections. I don't want to have these mundane connections where I ain't going nowhere. So you might leave alone like your, your regular buddies that you be clubbing with and you might learn something from other friends that you had or gain some new ones. So, um, this having in the 11th house, you can really use to your advantage because this can actually help you really truly, uh, inspire you to go further in life by putting your rooms because i'm telling you the conversation hits different when people do have something to lose and they're going after something or towards something in life the people that ain't got nothing going on oh that's a dangerous person that you don't want to be around <laughs> okay um so 12th house so we all know 12th house is all about you know it's spirituality it's the subconscious it's like inner growth so you might tap more into the spiritual aspect when pluto goes into capricorn and is transiting in the 12th house okay you might be on a spiritual journey you might want to do an ayahuasca retreat you might want to you know what i'm saying find ways to grow inside so that you can shine bright on the outside so whatever that looks like for you um you might be more connected to uh, esoteric information and things of that nature so um, I feel here in 12th house also too, you might, you know what I'm saying? If you do shadow work, you might actually put yourself in a situation where you can go through what are my fears or why was I fearing that or why is that a trigger, you know, and do a lot of healing. You might see some things and gain a lot of insight, you know, like, oh, I don't, I'm just going to break these old patterns and gain some new habits. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, you might be alone a lot. You might not want to be out all the time. You kind of want to be more in solitude during this time because transiting this 12th house, okay? You might gain some introspection in that in that sense, okay? And engage in new spiritual practices or create new things for you. You never was into meditation and now you are. So it's kind of like more spiritual. You okay. have the moon is going to be in Aries, which is a fire sign. So this is going to bring on lots of strong emotions during this time as well. Um, everyone's going to strive to be independent, you know, it's all about self, you know, being very reliant, wanting to initiate and do things on their own. Um, so, you know, everyone's going to have the courage and the confidence and be resilient during this time and, you know, want to get out and be physical, you know what I'm saying? And also talk because Mercury and Gemini. So I'll talk more about that on Monday. Um, so watch out for that video, okay? We do have three baby stelliums, okay? With all um, these planets in Pisces, you know, it's gonna be a very a profound type of a transformation as far as spirituality, your intuition, your creativity, and your emotional healing at this time. So, you know, you might wanna explore the subconscious, like, you know, um, you know, explore your spiritual beliefs and, you know, really gain, you know, um, a, d a deeper meaning to life, you know, as far as your emotions, things of that nature. You might release, like I said, old patterns, you know. Um, this is just lots of personal growth and how you transform with utilizing um, the planets that are in the water signs. Now we do have um, four planets. Well, uh, we have the vertex, but let's say three. So we're going to have, uh, as far as in Leo, um, we're going to have Venus uh, in Leo, Mars in Leo, and also we have Lilith in Leo. So that's just going to boost our, you know, self-expression, our creative energy, our leadership, you know, our personal power, like personal power for real because of Pluto and Capricorn, um, you know. We're gonna just really reassess our own personal goals too, you know, especially if you're super ambitious or if you have any goals, hopefully you do, in some creative pursuits. Um, this will kind of push that. You may experience a shift in how you express yourself in an authentic way and kind of like really embrace your personal power during this time. Um, you know, it can be a time to just really grow and discover who you are and what your purpose is with all that fire energy. You know what I mean? Utilize it to your advantage. And we also have still lots of planets in Taurus here. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got Jupiter in Taurus, which is major. This is what, how our experience is. And then we have the unexpected Uranus, which is also in Taurus as well. And we still have our North Node, which is retrograde in Taurus as well. So remember our North Node is where we should be operating to have those new experiences. And Jupiter is also allowing us to do that in the same sign. So with all of this Taurian energy still playing out, lots of deep transformational shifts as far as our material possessions, our finances, um, our values, how we bring on the stability within our life, you know, just still emphasis on that. Same thing, guys, with that. So we might reevaluate our relationship with money, what we got going on, you know, our possessions. We might, you know, clean things out, you know, get rid of things to bring in the new or, you know, get more things, you know what I mean? So uh, depending on what are, whatever the things are that you value or whatever your priorities are, I should say. Um, so this may bring lots of opportunities as far as, you know, inner growth as well to empower you. Um, like, how do you handle your resources? You know, how are you going to establish a sense of security for yourself? Okay. So that's pretty much it. That's the name of the game as far as Pluto in Capricorn um, going retrograde. So don't forget, you guys, please comment down below. Let me know what uh, rising sign you have or what experiences that you had previously. Or um, let me know what you're excited for, what you're tapping into. Don't forget to smash the like button as well. Um, definitely help us out the channel. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and click the bell. And I'll definitely see you guys on the next one. Peace.